जियो हजार एंड डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट टाइप्स ऑफ नेचुरल डिजास्टर्स ऑब्जेक्टिव्स द पर्पस ऑफ दिस लेसन इज टू मेक द यूजर टू नो अबाउट द टाइप्स एंड इफेक्ट्स ऑफ डिजास्टर्स द कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ अर्थक्वेक्स सुनामीज वॉलकैनिक एरप्शंस फ्लड्स साइक्लोन्स हरिकेन्स landslides bush fires droughts epidemic accidents and civil unrest it is important to analyze the effects of disasters in relation to their own local circumstances introduction disasters are serious dangerous and intolerable phenomena frequently occurring on the planet earth thousands of people die in a moment millions of people may become homeless within a day huge infrastructure may get damaged within a few seconds or minutes disasters are the catastrophic events shocking the whole world and making the humanity to feel very sad and depressed all life and life support systems are also affected by these unexpected incidences what is required ultimately is to minimize the effects of these disasters by applying certain disaster management practices the subject of disaster management is a compulsory part of learning by all students in earth and atmospheric sciences definition of disaster by definition disaster means a catastrophe a mishap a calamity or grave danger event occurred in an area and affected life and properties it may be arising from natural or man-made causes or by accident or due to negligence this sudden event results in the substantial loss of life or create much suffering to humans and other life it also includes much damage to and destruction of property or damage to or degradation of the environment a disaster is of such a nature or magnitude as to be beyond the coping capacity of the community of the affected area dozens of types of disasters happen all over the world at one time or the other it is necessary to have an understanding of the types of disasters their causes characteristics and impacts terminologies a disaster is any violent event causing death injury disease or damage to the life and properties it also damages the physical infrastructure and the environment the term hazard is related to the threats to life to the well-being and to the material goods people who are severely affected due to disasters are called as vulnerable population the term vulnerability is used to denote the degree to which an individual or a community is at risk of experiencing a misfortune the term risk is defined as the expected damage or loss caused by any hazard it depends on vulnerability of the people exposed to these hazards and its severity or periodicity natural disasters are never ending processes every disaster may have a short term or long term impact disasters can never be stopped but their impacts can be minimized disaster management disaster management is the only solution to these issues disaster management involves a threefold activity as the disaster preparedness as a pre disaster professional development disaster response at the time of the event and relief and rehabilitation after the incident there are many physical educational institutional psychological political and socio economic issues which are to be considered in disaster management it is necessary to understand the types of disasters while dealing with disaster management types of natural disasters different types of disasters are distinguished in terms of their nature 
and extent of impacts. The following are the major types of disasters that are commonly encountered. Agricultural diseases and pests, cyclones and damaging winds, drought and water shortage, earthquakes, emergency diseases, pandemic influenza, extreme heat, floods and flash floods, hail, hurricanes and tropical storms, landslides and debris flow, thunderstorms and lightning, tornadoes, tsunamis, wildfire, winter and ice storms, sinkholes, man-made and technological types of disasters. Disasters can also be caused by humans. Hazardous materials emergencies include chemical spills and groundwater contamination. Workplace fires are more common incidences and can cause significant property damage and loss of life. People are also vulnerable to threats posed by extremist groups who use violence against both people and property. The types of man-made disasters are hazardous materials, power service disruption and blackout, nuclear power plant and nuclear blast, radiological emergencies, chemical threat and biological weapons, cyber attacks, explosion, civil unrest. Sudden occurrences. Disasters like earthquakes, hailstorms, avalanches, landslides, etc. occur quite suddenly. Similarly, floods and cyclones occur with some element of warning, yet their occurrence is confined to a short duration. Drought, on the other hand, spans over a much longer time frame and its adverse impact will be on the economic activities of people and on the life of an area. The effects are more of a long-lasting nature. Major Types of Disasters Natural disasters may be broadly grouped into major and minor types depending upon their potential to cause damage to human life and property. The disasters like earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, droughts, floods and cyclones could be regarded as major types. The disasters like hailstorms, avalanches, landslides, fire accidents, etc., whose impact is localized and the intensity of the damage is much less than the others, may be categorized as minor disasters. Minor disasters Minor disasters like hailstorms, avalanches, landslides, and forest fires also occur without any appreciable degree of warning. Almost all of them cause damage to properties and lives. However, areas prone to be affected by such disasters could be identified. Certain precautionary measures could also be taken in the context of potential threat requiring general awareness and preparedness for appropriate responses on the part of the local administration. In addition to these, wartime civil defense or protection measures are also coming under this concept. General effects of disasters The typical effects of disasters may be one or more of the following. Loss of life, injury, damage to and destruction of property, damage to and destruction of plantations and crops, disruption of production, disruption of lifestyle, disruption of transport, loss of livelihood and occupation to people, disruption to essential services like electricity, water supply and gas supply, damage to national infrastructure, disruption of communication and other networks, disruption to government systems and schemes, shortage of food resources, spreading of diseases, national economic loss, and sociological effects and psychological after-effects. Consequences Some are direct and primary consequences, and some may be secondary and indirect consequences. Whenever a natural disaster occurs, it will certainly cause an economic crisis, starvation, epidemic, migration, landlessness, homelessness, 
orphanage to some children and massive deaths. Earthquakes Earthquakes are shaking of the earth's crustal blocks due to the movement of plates and their rocks along a fault or plate boundaries. The rocks under stress accumulate strain energy over a period of time. When the stress exceeds the strength of the rocks, then the rock gets broken. The strain energy is released as seismic waves. The longer that energy is stored up and is maintained without release, the more likely that a strong earthquake will occur. For an earthquake to occur, there will be no warning. However, after the occurrence of a major earthquake, secondary shocks may indicate of a further earthquake. The speed of onset of an earthquake may be usually sudden. For this purpose, the earthquake-prone areas are generally well identified and defined or demarcated. Major impacts and effects come mainly from land movement, fracture or slippage. Due to lack of warning, a severe loss to life occurs during earthquakes. Seismic-prone areas People of seismic-prone areas must go for seismic-resistant constructions, analyzing the terrain conditions, providing proper safety systems, dam protection and circuit controls in gas and electricity lines. Post-earthquake activity mainly involves proper and immediate medical assistance, rescue of victims, damage and needs assessment, relief to survivors, clearing of roads, re-establishing communication channels, supply of food, blankets, clothes and other materials. Rehabilitation includes repair and reconstruction, setting the lines of water, electricity and sewage lines, economic programs to provide jobs, credit assistance and donations are the life-giving solutions. Tsunami Seismic Sea Wave Tsunami are huge seismic sea waves that are generated by the earthquakes originating under the sea. If the earthquake displaces the sea surface, waves are generated that can grow while moving over the sea surface. Characteristics of Tsunamis Tsunami are typical disasters. The occurrence is related to several factors. The velocity of the tsunami wave depends on the depth of water where the seismic disturbance occurs. The initial wave velocity may be as high as 900 km per hour kph, slowing to approximately 50 kph as the wave strikes the land. The warning time depends on the distance from the point of wave origin. The speed of onset of a tsunami varies. Their impacts on a shoreline can be preceded by a marked recession of normal water level prior to the arrival of a wave. This can result in a massive outgoing tide followed by the incoming tsunami wave. People may be trapped when they investigate the phenomenon of the outgoing tide and then be struck by the incoming wave. The tsunami wave can be very destructive. The wave heights may be of 30 meters or more. A tsunami can cause flooding, saltwater contamination of crops, soil and water supplies, destruction and damage to buildings, structures and all shoreline vegetation happens during a tsunami. Volcanic eruptions Sudden eruptions of volcanoes can create a lot of damages. Characteristics of volcanic eruptions Volcanoes also cause disaster threats. Most of the major eruptions can be predicted. Volcanic eruptions come with severe blasts. A blast can destroy all structures and environmental settings surrounding to it. They also cause fires. They also create forest fires. The land surface cracking resulting from volcanic explosion may affect the buildings and other structures. The lava flow can bury buildings and crops. It may also cause fires and render land unstable. Ash in its airborne form can affect aircraft by ingestion into engines. 
ground deposit of ash may also destroy the crops and affect the land use conditions and water supplies. Volcanic ash may cause respiratory problems. Sometimes, mud flows may arise from associated heavy rain. Floods Floods have the greatest damage potential when compared to the other natural disasters over the environment. Floods are also considered to be both social and economic disasters. A flood is a body of water overflowing the river channels. Floods are associated with some extreme natural events that happen over a drainage basin. Floods are defined as relatively high flows which overtakes the natural channels provided for the runoff. The level at which water flows along streams is called as the river stage. During flood, the stage of a river is high. The river water during a flood usually overflows its banks. Characteristics of floods Floods are classified as long, short or no warning type of flood. Their speed of onset may be gradual or sudden. There may be seasonal patterns to flooding. Major effects arise mainly from inundation and erosion. Severe floods may include isolation of communities or areas and involve the need for large-scale evacuation. Effects of floods Every flood affects the long-term economic growth. Inflation, unemployment and more financial burden are the other effects. Flood hazard maps, flood proofing of existing buildings, flood detection, facilities to reduce flood damage, construction of more open channels and detention facilities are needed. Methods of control. Floods are controlled by construction of reservoirs, river channels, natural detention basins, interbasin water transfer, construction of levees and flood walls, diversion canals, bank stabilization, best agronomic practices, afforestation and catchment zone management. These are done to modify the susceptibility of flood damage through floodplain management, structural changes, flood proofing, disaster preparedness, flood forecasting and flood warning. Disaster management methods are adopted to reduce the loss through emergency evacuation, flood fighting, public health, disaster relief, flood insurance and tax remission. Cyclones A cyclone is defined as any large system of winds that rotates about a center of low atmospheric pressure with a speed over 100 km per hour. This swirling action happens in a counterclockwise direction north of the equator and in a clockwise direction to the south. The diameter of the ring of swirling winds may range from 500 to 1500 kilometers. It is a highly dynamic movement and the direction of its transgression is not precisely predictable. Anticyclones have a flow opposite to that of cyclones, that is, an outward spiraling motion with the winds rotating clockwise in the northern hemisphere and counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere. They are usually not as strong as the cyclonic storms and bring no rainfall. Strong horizontal temperature gradients are responsible for the formation of cyclones. These are known as the tropical cyclones. Those cyclones that form outside the equatorial belt are known as extratropical cyclones. The name of cyclone differs from region to region. The tropical cyclones are called as hurricanes in the Atlantic and Caribbean, as typhoons in the Western Pacific, Philippines and China, and as willy willies off the coasts of Australia. Based on their velocities, wind speeds are classified into various kinds. According to the famous Beaufort wind scale, the following categories are made. A gentle breeze when it is having a wind velocity of 12 to 19 km per hour. This force can move 
leaves and small twigs. A strong breeze when it is having a wind velocity of 39 to 49 kmph. This force can make large branches of trees sway and make it difficult to use umbrellas. A moderate gale when it is having a wind velocity of 50 to 61 kmph. This will make a person feel difficult to walk against the wind. A whole gale when it is having a wind velocity of 89 to 102 kmph. This force can uproot the trees. A storm when it is having a wind velocity of 103 to 117 kmph. This will create a widespread damage. A hurricane when it is having a wind velocity of more than 117 kmph. This force will lead to a violent destruction. Tropical cyclones are accompanied by winds of extreme violence. Storms usually occur with cyclones. It is defined as a circular storm with rotating wind speeds in excess of 32 meters per second. The lifespan of a tropical cyclone is on an average 6 to 9 days until it enters the land. No tropical cyclone follows the same track. Hurricanes A hurricane is a powerful whirling storm that measures 320 to 480 kilometers in diameter. The winds near the center of a hurricane blow at speeds of 120 kilometers per hour or more. Many hurricanes have caused widespread death and destruction. The strongest winds and heaviest rain of a hurricane occur within its wall clouds. Hurricanes occur in the North Atlantic and North Pacific Oceans from June to November, most of them in September. On an average, about six to eight hurricanes form in these regions. Tornadoes A tornado is a powerful twisting windstorm. These are the most violent winds that occur on the Earth. They whirl around the center at more than 320 kilometers per hour speed. Most of them measure several hundred meters in diameter. It becomes a rotating funnel cloud that extends downward from a mass of dark clouds. Some of them do not reach the earth. Others may strike the surface of the earth, withdraw into the dark clouds above, and then dip down and strike the earth again. It happens in the United States and in parts of Australia. Most tornadoes last less than an hour. Some of them last several hours and measure up to about 2.5 kilometers in diameter. Tornadoes can uproot large trees, overturn railway carriages and carry cars hundreds of meters away. Typhoons A typhoon is a violent, low-pressure tropical storm that occurs in the western Pacific Ocean. They are similar to hurricanes beginning near the equator and move westward. They advance slowly, usually at about 15 to 25 kilometers per hour speed. The circular winds around the center are very strong, often reaching speeds of 240 kilometers per hour. The diameter of a typhoon can be as large as 480 kilometers. Typhoons are associated with heavy rains and powerful winds causing severe land and property damage and loss of life. The destructive rush of seawater, called a storm surge, often accompanies a typhoon as it moves onto the coastal lands. Characteristics of Cyclones Cyclones have a destructive power. They attack coastal regions with severe storms and rainfall. Activated by the rainstorms, they can easily remove huts, small shelters, trees and plants, boats and other vehicles. Every storm changes the distribution pattern of surface water bodies, groundwater systems, affect the growth of freshwater crops, disrupt the normal cycle of life and occupation. Cyclones give indications well before their arrival. They give long warning. The speed of onset is gradual. They tend to conform to seasonal pattern. The major effects arise mainly 
from destructive force of winds and storm surges. Flooding from intense rainfall may also increase the damage. Landslides may follow flooding and heavy rainfall. All these cumulatively lead to destruction and or severe damage to buildings and other structures, roads, essential services, crops and the environment. Major loss of life and livestock may occur. Cyclone warning. Warning and tracking of tropical cyclones are essential tasks of the people. Cyclone warning can help to vacate the zones of danger and prepare for advance relief measures. Attempts to forecast tropical cyclones date back to the 19th century. Cyclone and pressure monitoring ships provide warning of any storm within the range. Earth observation satellites transmit live images of any part of the globe and its cloud systems. Methods to protect the environment against tornadoes are a permanent requirement in some places. Methods of monitoring Weather monitoring stations obtain information from local observers, radar stations and the pilots of aircraft when weather conditions appear to be dangerous. The receiving stations issue warning messages to the people and in the area of the tornado. Every country having a long coastal belt has to establish a cyclone warning network. Wind tunnel research is a major activity to propose cyclone resistant houses and structures. It is very difficult to protect the vegetation without constructing sea walls and shelter belts. Ports and harbors need frequent maintenance operations and hence they need to evolve certain precautionary measures. The origin of a cyclone may be spotted out using a satellite image at least two days in advance. This is one of the major advantages of organizing precautionary measures and relief related activities. Landslide Landslide is a general term used to describe the downslope movement of soil, rock and organic materials under the effects of gravity and also the land form that results from such movement. Landslides can be classified into different types on the basis of the type of movement and the type of material involved. The material in a landslide may be either a rock or soil or both. The latter is described as earth if mainly composed of sand sized or finer particles and debris if it is composed of coarser fragments. The type of movement describes the actual internal mechanics of how the landslide mass is displaced. Fall, topple, slide, spread or flow. Characteristics of landslide The warning period of a landslide may vary. Little or no warning may be available if the cause is an earthquake. However, some general warning may be assumed in the case of landslide arising from continuous heavy rain. Minor initial landslips may give warning that heavy landslides are to follow. Natural movement of land surface can be monitored, thus providing long warning of possibility of landslides. The speed of onset is mostly rapid. The damage to structures and systems can be severe. Due to landslides, the rivers may be blocked causing flooding. Due to this, the crops may be affected. Sometimes, area of crop producing land may be lost altogether. When landslides are combined with very heavy rain and flooding, the movement of debris may cause high levels of damage and destruction. Bushfire or wildfire. It is also called as forest fires. Bushfires are frequent events occurring during the hotter months of the year. They are formed due to hot and dry climate. In some countries, it happens every year. Bushfires impact extensive areas. They can cause property damage and loss of human life. In certain countries, the native flora have evolved to rely on bushfires as a means of reproduction. And fire events are an interwoven and an essential part of the ecology of the continent. Characteristics of bushfire 
most bushfire prone areas are well known and well defined the bushfire threat tends to be seasonal the speed of onset may vary it can be rapid under conditions of high temperatures and high wind when major fire fronts advance very quickly also fragments of fire from a main front may be carried forward by the wind starting new fires further ahead this is sometimes known as spotting the effects can be very destructive especially in loss of buildings timber and livestock the recovery from effects on the environment may take several years evacuating the communities may be difficult and dangerous in the face of a major fire front drought this is arising due to recurring failure of monsoons the area affected by drought becomes dry and waterless food security will be affected water scarcity prevails everywhere people die due to hunger characteristics of drought major areas liable to drought are usually well known the periods of drought can be prolonged the area or areas affected may be very large droughts give early warning well before its occurrence the effects on agriculture livestock rural industry production and human habitation may be severe this may lead to prolonged food shortages or famine the long term effects can be in the form of severe economic loss erosion which affects future habitation and production and sometimes abandonment of large tracts of land the man made activities may aggravate the possibility and extent of the drought problem the inability and or unwillingness of the population to move from drought prone areas may aggravate the problem further epidemic epidemic is the spread of sudden outbreak of contagious diseases due to some natural or man made reasons the disaster related epidemic arises generally from the disrupted living conditions which follow disaster impact epidemic may arise from food sources water sources inadequate medical facilities and poor health standards malnutrition and vector borne sources example mosquitoes types of diseases types of disease include hepatitis typhoid diphtheria malaria cholera influenza enteritis diarrhea skin diseases and food poisoning under post impact conditions when personnel and facilities may be limited disease outbreaks may prove difficult situation to contain and control this may particularly apply if community health education is of substandard in reality the warning is self evident in most of the post impact circumstances the speed of onset of a disease outbreak is mostly rapid major accidents accidents are sudden incidents causing severe loss of life and properties these are mostly unexpected incidences accidents are usually violent in nature it may be an industrial or other explosion aircraft crash major fire and a train collision it can have limited or widespread effect accidents are mostly limited but do not show any warning the speed of onset is gradually rapid civil unrests this is a humanly induced activity it creates a lot of problems to well being the causative factors are many violent and disruptive activities occur like bombing armed clashes mob demonstrations and violence patterns of civil unrest are difficult to predict therefore effective warning may also be difficult in many civil unrest circumstances especially terrorism the investigators have the initiative thus complicating the task of law enforcement authorities other disasters severe outbreaks of animal diseases that threaten rural industries food production may also occur indian scenario many regions in india are vulnerable to regular natural disasters on account of its unique geological and climatic conditions 
About 60% of the area of the country is prone to earthquakes of various intensities. Over 40 million hectares of land are prone to be affected by floods. About 8% of the total area is prone to frequent cyclones and 68% of the area is susceptible to drought. Some regions are common to these multiple disasters. In the last decade, between 1990 and 2000, an average of about 4,344 people lost their lives and about 30 million people were affected by disasters every year. The loss in terms of private, community and public assets has been alarming. The United Nations General Assembly in 1989 declared that period as the international decade for natural disaster reduction. It was done with the basic objective to reduce the loss of lives and property and restrict the socio-economic damage caused by disasters. Conclusion Disaster management is the only way to mitigate the effects of all these hazards. India has efficiently handled the recent cyclones and reduced the effects to bare minimum level. It was possibly due to advanced planning. Advanced planning is always needed to keep the items of emergency for any disaster. Guidelines are also to be prepared in the form of booklets and circulated to the educated individuals. Awareness camps are to be organized for the public. Training is yet another initiative. Training involves the duties and responsibilities, efforts to sustain, role of employees and NGOs, risks, errors, behavioral patterns, recovery techniques, communication channels, safety rules, priorities and security measures. Understanding of the types of disasters is a basic necessity in disaster management.